Work Friends, Observatory, Maui. Gordy Lang. I love working with Gordy. We are on the same wavelength in life. We are working on many fascinating projects. Gordy was smart, intelligent, and was very kind. Great traits to have, especially in this work environment. Lois. I used to swim with Lotus, Lois during lunch. We used to do open air swimming in the ocean. Lois was extremely bright. She got a degree <coughs> in mathematics. We are still in contact today. I have wonderful memories of working with her. Tom Olstein. Tom and I were both surf buddies and work buddies. He grew up in Catalina. His dad was mayor. Tom attended the Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs. Last time I saw Tom, he and his family visited us in Penn Valley, California. I love his Facebook post. Bob Jensen. Bob was another great friend of mine. We were also surf buddies and work buddies. I remember a day at a surf spot called Dumps where we got caught inside and dragged underwater a couple of hundred yards. Bob did a video of the Dome Automation Program, which I would love to see again. I lost my copy. Hargu and Fursab. Hargu and Fursab both came from Ethiopia. I remember they invited us over twice for an Ethiopian feast. I still think about it today. Lois and Bill were also invited. They welcomed us into their beautiful home. Both of them were extremely bright. I still use their recipes today. Bob Brim. Bob is a great friend of mine. We still talk to each other 20 years later. I had many incredible surf sessions with Bob. He recently retired from the observatory after 40 years of service. Great man, great heart. I loved his humor and laughter. Paul Tanner. Paul and I had a great team in building the dome automation program. He was a delight to work with. His passion was cycling. He rode all over Maui. Paul even had several adventures cycling in North America. One of my favorite moments was Paul driving the van up the mountain and listening to Israel's singing somewhere over the rainbow. It still sends me chills today. We are driving up this beautiful mountain and this song is playing on the radio. My heart goes out to Paul and his family. Tom Glesney. Tom was a windsurfer. I remember several times he would invite my wife and I for a great dinner party. Tom was also a great chef. He had a great heart. Yes, he was extremely smart. Most people who worked at the observatory were smart people. I haven't seen nor heard from him in many years. Steve Shimko. Good old Steve. He was quite the character. Once he invited my wife and I to a family reunion in Maui. His parents came from Cleveland, Ohio. They definitely made me laugh. I could see where Steve got his humor from. I've been trying to track down Steve for years. Someday I will. Grin. Nia. Bob Gatehouse. Bob and I worked on a project for the Navy Supply Center. He is a pleasure to work with. Many times we spent the work week in San Diego. We went to many great restaurants. Once Bob and his family visited us in Nevada City. Great family. Long time no see. Dada. Dana was another person I loved to work with. He originally was from India. I love Indian food. It's one of my favorites. I'm still in contact with him today. It's not frequent, but we still think about each other. Dexter Roberson. I first met Dexter in Maui. He came over and did a job interview for his company in Oakland, California. This was for the Naval Supply Center in San Diego. Java was a brand new programming language. I felt like Dexter was a great friend. A couple of years later, Dexter hired me to work for Charles Schwab. I was there for almost 10 years. I have nothing but praise for Dexter. I lived in his house for a few weeks when I moved from Maui. 
Charles Schwab, Glenn Mathis. Glenn and I are still great friends today. We work on many software projects together. I'm in contact with him about twice a year. He has been working with Charles Schwab for about 26 years. I've had many interesting conversations with Glenn. He is extremely bright. Last time I saw him was in Lawrence, Kansas about two years ago. We met at Zen Zero, a great restaurant. Maurice Wright. Maurice is another unique individual. He went to Berkeley. Maurice is both left brain and right brain balanced. He loves to practice caparola. Caparola is an African Brazilian martial art that combines element of dance, acrobatics, and music. I love that Maurice is a unique individual. He works well with everyone and is a delight to be around. Eric Wood. Eric lives in Indiana. We worked on many projects together. Eric lives in the country where he has homeschooled his kids. Eric is another who has a keen sense of humor. I work with him for around 10 years. Eric is extremely bright. Eric Noyes. I worked with Eric for a few years. We went surfing together a few times in San Francisco. He lived in Ocean Beach. Ocean Beach on a big day is for expert only. Eric invited me to his wedding. Eric's music is playing me. Passion is playing music. He had a band that toured for a while. Jock Avery. Here's another story of the web of life. I first went with Jock and Mia. We worked on the same project together. A few years later, both of us end up working for Dexter at Charles Schwab. Jock and his family invited me to stay at their house for a period of time while I was in San Francisco. We became great friends. I met his wife and family members. Thank Jock for all that you are. Dan Villarreal. Dan was the driving force to develop this program. He is very easygoing and yet the program was a tremendous success. Built a program called PAC, which transfers, which tracks all transfers of authorizations going out for a broker when they leave the company. Each broker signing, signs an agreement saying they won't take any clients with them when they leave the company. This program tracks all ex-employees for a certain period of time, depending on their warning level. It will send out an email when the threshold is met. The legal department has used this tool for bringing lawsuits towards ex-employees who have violated their contract. Dick Furman. Dick was the project manager on many of the projects that I worked with. He truly was a pleasure to work with. None of our projects never failed. Thanks, Dick, for all that you did. Chris Opala. Chris was a junior programmer when he first started to work for Charles Schwab. Fast forward 12 years, and now he is a senior developer. Chris was a joy to work with. I still read his Facebook posts today. Still here at advertising. I once had a job interview with Pratik. In the interview, I asked him what part of India he came from. <laughs> he said, you won't know. Well, I asked him again, and he said, Derudun. Well, I know Derudun. He was completely taken by surprise. Plexus Software, Xander Dory. Xander was on the same spiritual wavelength that I was on. I love to read his Facebook posts. He is living such a fantasy, fantastic life. In the past few years, he has lived all over the states. Xander truly thinks outside of the box. Chris Fossey. Chris and I worked on many projects together at Plexus. We would take walks together each day. He was from Canada and, and, and moved here to be with his future wife. Chris has a great heart. He's an exceptional developer. Hats go off for Chris. Work Friends 2 USDA TAR TAR was a great tester for the GIS mapping program which I worked on. We became good friends. 
I'll always remember the time we spent together at our Christmas party. I got to know your Spanish husband more. Craig Belser. Craig and I were the major developers for maintaining and adding new features to the farm mapping GIS system. Craig owned a beer company on the side. We had a great time working with each other. Eric Cox. I love to work with Eric. Eric loves all kinds of foods. He gave me many different tips on the great restaurants he loves. I love to read his Facebook posts. I get to see what he's up to. Sarb. Sarb and I used to be part of a ride-sharing program. He invited, he invited my wife and I to a couple of Sikh events. We loved the food and got to meet Sarb's family from India. Mohan. Mohan had an interesting childhood education. He attended a school where Satya Saibaba created. Satya Saibaba was a famous Indian guru who died a few years back. He was responsible in creating schools and hospitals in India. I will never forget the time I was invited to his house and had some great Indian food. Mohan gave me some great Indian recipes. Kiran. Presently, both Kiran and Mohan worked together in Upper New York. Kiran was incredibly talented. As I remember, he loved to play cricket. Recently, he got married. I will always rem <coughs> remember the good times that we had. Mike Reed. Mike and I have been friends for seven years. We don't see eye to eye in politics, but that does not start stop our friendship. It's funny. We all want the same thing for the planet, yet we have many different ways of seeing. Mike is a great guy with a huge heart. Todd Comer. Todd and I worked together for four years. When Todd was young, he had the opportunity to go down the Missouri River all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico. Todd think outside the box. He documented the rave dance scene in Kansas City. He took over 150,000 photos. I love his family reunion. He invited us to. John Keck. John is extremely creative. Uh, on one side, he's a great musician and singer. I love to listen to his music. John has played all over the Kansas City area. Vijanan and Rama. I first met Vid when I was working for SAIC. The last time <coughs> I saw him was at an anniversary get together for Donna Sheree. I had a great conversation with Rama. Vid told me that this was the first conversation with an American. Vid and his family are back in India. They have been back for a few years now. I'm glad we have Facebook so we can connect to each other. Lauren Brickman. I first met Lauren at SCIC about six years ago. We enjoyed each other's company. We make time to see each other by going to an Indian restaurant for lunch. Then we can catch up on our adventures in life. Phone book, friends. I have this old phone book for around 40 years. Here's some stories to tell. Pam Johnson. I first met Pam in Nelson, British Columbia in 1975. We were living with some friends of mine, <coughs> the Shoals. The Shoals built a lovely log cabin house. I remember when Bill Shoal cut himself with a chainsaw and they wrapped camphor leaves around it. Fast forward 10 years and Pam is living in Miami Beach. What a small world. Yes, Pam loves to meditate. Chris Vanderhoot. Chris was an incredible server and board maker. I knew him for a while. Once upon a time, I did a virtual walkthrough in a cannery in Haiku. Chris's surfboard shop was featured. Katya Miller. <laughs> Katya was a great surfing friend of mine on Maui. She used to live for a couple of years at the Mexican Malibu way before it was known. She had a great sense of humor. Bill Keating. 
I used to go sailing on Bill's Hobie Cat in the 80s. He was a great guy to be around. Bill liked to meditate. Lon Cotton. I worked with Lon at the observatory. He was friends with Kirk Carlson. <coughs> they were in the military together. I taught Lon and a group of friends how to surf. I just found Lon <coughs> on Facebook. Moe and Marco. I taught Moe and Marco how to surf. Marco was a great <coughs> hockey puncher. George Martin. My dear friend George. George, for a while, <coughs> was interested in my adventures with the On Maui project. I was interested in virtual reality, and both of us went to a virtual reality conference sponsored by Silicon Graphics. George was also a surfer. My family had many dinners at his house. <coughs> it was never boring. I remember a couple from Upper Kula who had this incredible house with this huge gym-like building. They had trapeze in the air. They were quite an individuals. George and I became friends with them. Mike Rache. I first met Mike at a San Diego Clippers meeting. Clipper was one of the X-based languages that we used in the development world. Mike and I became friends. I wrote some templates that could be used for developers. It was based upon Wall Saw, Saw, Sauce product, Grumfish, and Grumfish. It allowed the user to create a photo database by designing your UI on the screen. My company was called Life's a Beach. Mike helped write the manual. Mike was into Tai Chi. Phyllis Mato. I knew Phyllis in Miami Beach. We live in the same apartment complex. Her baby boy was born premature. By the grace of God, it survived. Phyllis loved to cook and loaned me a book. She left town for a few years and went to Europe. She came back and I returned the book. A <laughs> great lady, great family. Mind you, this was 30 years ago. Martin Dell. This is another story of the web that ties us together. Martin is John Byer's stepdad. I first met him in the 70s in New York City. Ten years later, I live in Miami Beach. Martin comes down frequently to go windsurfing. He buys an apartment in Miami Beach. We develop a great relationship. I remember the great restaurants we would go to. Fast forward a few years, I'm living in San Diego. I get a phone call from Martin saying he's coming to town for a few days, invites me to go sailing with him and his son's friend. In the 70s, I babysat him in New York City. One interesting story about Martin. At one point in time, he was a diplomat serving in France. He was quite young at the time. Many times, people would ask Martin, could we see your father, not knowing he was the diplomat. Rest in part, rest in peace, Martin. I have great memories of you. Mary Lou. For a short time, I stayed in Mary's house in Sedona. Brian Bells, my wife and I were roommates. I remember one Christmas taking a walk after a snowstorm from the backyard. It was wide open. I loved to see the snow among the red rocks. My wife and I still remember this today. Bye, Mary Lou. It's been 30 plus years. Nellie. Nellie is dear to my heart. She is as close to a mother as one can have. Maybe she was my mother on another planet. Grin. It's a long story to tell. Rob complained. Complained. John Byer and Rob were business partners for a period of time. They were importing plumbing from Europe. I remember writing a software program for the business. I first met Rob in Denver in the, in the 70s. In the 80s, he and his family moved to Miami Beach. I always remember the great party he had. Great memories of Rob. Norma Thompson. I first met Norma in San Diego in the 80s. Her husband had a brainwave facility. I remember many times going to use their flotation tanks. That was quite the experience. Fast forward 15 years. My daughter and I are sitting in a car in Ashland, Oregon. I hear this voice and it sounds like Norma. It looks like Norma, but I'm not sure. 
A few days later, I'm at the Y with my wife, and we run into Norma. What a small world. When we moved to Maui, Norma with my, with my wife to Maui for a vacation. Ashlea Nelson and Bob Neal. I first met Ashlea in Phoenix during the 80s. Ten years later, I bump into her and then to Maui. Ashlea married Bob Neal and I cooked an Indian feast for the wedding reception. I really liked Bob. He owned a series of dry cleaning stores in Maui. I helped him in some software projects. Ashlea started a successful dolphin touring company. Steve and Annie Oakley. I remember taking a road trip with the Oakleys in the 70s. We drove from Denver to Ma Miami. Elise Kaplan was friends with the Oakleys. At that time, Steve coordinated the meals for many of the festivals held in the States and around the world. Fast forward 10 years. We are both living in Miami Beach. Steve has been an, yes, has been an acupuncturist for 30 plus years. He is living with Annie in Boulder, Colorado. Bob Poldy. Bob was a character. I remember I was working on this mansion and Bob would be practicing his golf swing by driving golf balls into the bay. He had quite the swing. Bob was great at cutting trees. I worked for him around a year. He had quite the sense of humor. Let's put it this way, the job was never boring. Phone book, friends, too. Steve Price. I first met Steve in New York in the early 70s. In the 80s, I'm living in Miami Beach. I'm a brand new software developer. On the side, I'm working with Jim Hessian and Steve. This is the beginning of my incredible career. Steve was bright and a delight to work with. Yes, Steve loved to meditate. I haven't heard from Steve since then. Mona Patterson. What can I say about Mona? She was one of the midwives of my daughter's Leilani birth. Leila Leilani was born at home and had a water birth. I will always remember placing Leilani in a tub of warm water and this incredible smile came on her face. Mona was incredible. I have great memories of her. Joe and Dee. Joe and Dee were landlords for our complex in Del Mar. We recently moved from San Diego. To be honest, our credit at that time wasn't the greatest. There was an opening at the complex and, and Dee was kind enough to rent us a place fast without doing a credit check. She said, once you're in, they won't kick you out. We became good friends. Ron Peters. Ron was a medical doctor. I first met him in New York City in the early 70s. 15 years later, he is living in Malibu. I remember him and his wife invited Kathy. And his wife Kathy invited me over for lunch. I had a great time. I have great memories of Ron. He loved to meditate. Roy. My friend Roy was out on this day. One of my favorite surf spots was Pacacalo near Wailuku. It is a river mouth reef break. One day I surfed in the morning and it was 46 Hawaiian. The Hawaiians measured the waves by their back, so a four foot wave to them is two feet. Anyway, the swell then went to six to eight feet and then 10, 10 to 12 feet. The waves were so large that when they broke, the ground would shake 25 feet below. I remember that one huge set came in and I was at the right place at the right time. I paddled hard and I dropped in easily. I did a bottom turn and this huge wave tunneled over me. I was riding with pure delight. My friends were in the channel paddling and they were screaming with joy what they were seeing. 
It's probably the best wave of my life. It took a long time to make it to shore. When I did, many of the surfers wanted to kiss the ground because of how large it got such a short period of time. Al was another great surf buddy. I went to Tavaru with him and the gang. I remember the great times we would go up the Hana coast in Maui and score good waves all to ourselves. We both were dawn patrollers. I would get to the beach before the sunrise and paddle out. Many times, Al would paddle out with me. Matt Kenoshita, boy, could he ever surf. He had it in his veins. I went on a surfing trip to Tavaru with him. I never saw such incredible surfing. Matt is a humble soul. He didn't say much. He lets his actions describe who he is. Matt has been making surfboards for many years. He has been a great mentor for the younger generation. Great person. Great heart. He carries the Aloha spirit with him. Felipe Ricketts. When we moved from Sedona to San Diego, a dear friend of mine said we could stay a few days at his house. To make a long story short, it didn't work out that way. Our friend introduced us to Felipe. Now Felipe likes to meditate and he was a, a surfer. A few days later, a few days later, we moved right next door to him. We've become good surfing buddies. The web of life continues. Ten years later, I'm working on a project in San Diego. I'm living. I live in the. Neva I'm living in Nevada City. I'm flying back and forth. During the work week, I'm staying at Felipe's house and paying him to stay there. We go surfing a lot together. I'm into snowboarding, and one weekend Felipe flies up, and we go snowboarding together. I will always remember the time we went camping in the high Sierra. Felipe Duran. Felipe was my daughter's Leilani's stepfather. He was an incredible dad to her. Leilani has told me many great stories about him. Thanks, Felipe, for being who you are. You mean a lot to me. Randy Redinges. Randy was a cousin of mine. I have many great memories of him. As a child, we go to Pasadena and visit his family. Randy learned how to surf and we go surfing together. As a matter of fact, he still continues to surf. He would take a whole month off and his family would travel to Mexico. Fast forward 20 years and I'm living in Del Mar. Randy is living in Encinitas right down the road. What a small world. Richard Grossman. My brother Richard and Honolly were great friends. Richard is one who thinks and lives outside of the box. I like that. He's been a shaman for over 40 years. He also is an acupuncturist. I have great memories of Richard. Glenn James. Glenn has been producing Hawaii's weather today for many moons. I once saw myself surfing at Wakipa on a show and he was kind enough to give me a video. Great guy. He provided a great service to the people of Maui. John Godden. John and his lovely wife lived in the same complex as we did in Miami Beach. We became running buddies. We would love to run at the golf course in Miami Beach. I have many great memories of that. John also loves to meditate. Years later, I met John again in Del Mar. We had a great lunch and get together. Gary Sportsman. I first met Gary in New York City. In the 80s, Gary is living in Miami Beach. Gary loves to meditate. He also loves to practice Hatha Yoga. I haven't seen Gary in many moons. May our paths one day be, be crossed. Jim Hessian. I first met Jim in New York City in the 70s. In the 80s, Jim got my first software developer job for a company he was working with. Jim and I did several software development jobs for companies in South Florida. I had a great time working with him. I remember a great party he threw. This was during the Michael Jackson phase when the album Thriller just came out. I haven't seen nor heard about Jim in 30 years. Ike and Amara. Ike and Amara live in the same neighborhood as we did in Penn Valley. He originally... 
He originally was from Turkey. For a while, he was my running partner. I will always cherish the dinners at your house. Both of you were great hosts. Would love to hear from you again. Dave Chalmers. Dave and I worked for a while for the Navy SEALs in Coronado. During lunch, we would go boogie board. The Navy SEALs had a policy. If you exercised during lunch, you had a one and a half hour lunch break. We took advantage of that. James Walton. James is a good friend of mine when I moved from Florida back to California. I stayed at his house for over a month. I remember the great time we had a retreat to Mendocino. What a great time we had. I haven't seen nor heard anything in 30 years. Rose Ahon. Rose is, was interested and in, instrumental in my writing. During the 80s, I was living in Maui and working at the observatory. Rose and I became good friends. I, I told her my story and she said, why don't you write a book? Well, I did. It's always a work in progress. Rose spent some considerable time editing. Fast forward 20 years, I'm living in Kansas City. Out of the blue, I get a telephone call from Rose. Well, what a blast from the past. She spent some time tracking me down. I had great memories of her. We are on the same wavelength in life. Jennifer De Dios. I used to work with Jen at Charles Schwab. Charles Schwab. We became good friends. I love hearing the adventures of her family. It is never boring. James and Connie Garcia. I have known James and Connie since 1976. We all ended up in Florida during the 80s. We became great friends. For a while, they lived across the street from us. I remember one time we all went to Disney World. Connie's aunt made an incredible Japanese lunchbox for all of us. I was in heaven. It's been over 30 years since I've seen them. They will be forever in my heart. Ovidio de, Le de Leon First met Ovidio in New York City. We first learned how to windsurf together in Miami. He took over the business that, that we rented the equipment from and ran it for over 30 years. Great friend of mine. Kike <coughs> Bocanegra I went to Peru for a surfing vacation and stayed at the Boca Negra's house in Mayor Florence. The entire family welcomed me. Kike is a dear friend. We became surf buddies when I lived in Del Mar. Alex Shea. <coughs> Alex and I have been friends since 1972. I worked for Alex on a project for a huge mansion in Miami Beach. I remember Alex going out and getting pizza and a favorite drink of mine called Malta. We used to play tennis together. Also going to Bihari Singh's house and having great Indian dinners and watching Indian movies. Rajaji, there was a time in my life where I was learning how to balance my spiritual life and my day-to-day -day life. Rajaji was a great mentor for me. Not through words, but just day-to-day -day actions. I learned through time that our day-to-day -day actions is our spiritual life. You can't separate the two. Claudia was a person who really supported me and my family. After my daughter, Leilani, was born, she came over to visit us. She went out of her way. I always remember the great Christmas gifts she would give us. She would always hold a place in my heart for her kindness. Michael Stubbs. Michael once spent an incredible amount of time recording Disney videos for my family. <coughs> they were incredible gifts. I always appreciate how kind and considerate he was. I have nothing but great words describing him. Petra was another person who was very kind to my family. I would bring my daughter Leilani to play with Claudia's kids, and Petra was her nanny. Petra was from Germany. 
She had a great sense of humor. I will always remember her kindness. Alan Rettinger. I first met Alan in New York City in the early 70s. Alan is an incredible chef. Now I like to cook. Alan brings it up 10 slots. I call Alan once or twice a year to catch up on things. Richie Ingwe. Richie and I became good friends. We lived for a while in the same apartment complex. We both worked a while for Alex Shea. Richie was an incredible singer. I mean, incredible. His voice was like an angel. Rest in peace, Richie. Gino Butto. Work with Gino at the Miami Beach Police Department. We became good friends. Once he gave me a ride in his yellow Ferrari. Recently, I tracked him down after 30 years of not seeing him. He will always be my friend. Susan Gregory. Susan had lived an incredible life. In her 60s, her and Rennie Davis were at the forefront of the anti-war movement. Rennie was part of the Chicago 7. Susan was my girlfriend for two years. She definitely had the spark of life. I remember quite fondly going on sailing trips with Bruce Rahm and Susan. We all had the time of our lives. Bruce built, built this wooden boat all by himself. We would go out on weekends and spend the night in the boat. Great times. Susan, you have a special place in my heart. The Doors family. I first met Mary working at the Fountain Blue Hilton in Miami Beach. We became good friends. Mary had a son named Jet, who at the time was probably around 10 years old. I used to take him windsurfing with me. During the fall and winter, the Miami area would get incredible strong winds. Jed would hold on to my waist as we reached incredible speeds flying across the water. He had the time of his life. The Doris family moved to Malibu and Jed learned how to surf. That's probably another story. Mary married Doug Bernard, who I've known since 1973. It's a small world. John Byer. John and I have been friends for 40 years. Wow, time sure flies. We first met in New York City around 1977. He was living in England with his wife and moved back to New York. We became instant friends. During the 80s, both of us landed in Miami Beach and we were exercise partners. We ran usually at night along the beach and then dove into the ocean. We loved to try different things. One day I saw an article in Omni Magazine about the Monroe Institute and decided to check it out. I went as you read about my adventures. John went a few weeks later. He became good friends of the Institute, including Robert Monroe. John introduced me to Mapu. He went to a seminar in California during the summer of 87. He came back with some tapes. I was intrigued. Paul McClane in one of my channeling sessions talked about Ma Fu before Ma Fu was introduced to the public. John has been a practitioner of rolfing for many years. This is from his website. John first experienced rolfing in 1973, absolutely amazed at its results. I saw, sought out every person who Dr. Rolf had personally instructed and particularly those she chose as her first students and received many hundreds of sessions of structural integration. I'm currently honored to have the esteemed Emulet Hutchison as my primary mentor, who promised Ida on her deathbed to carry her work forward in its purest form as long as it lived. <coughs> After training in Hello Work and at the Rolf Institute, I graduated from the Guild for Structural Integration in Boulder, Colorado, and a practice in the Zuma Terrace Building in Malibu since 1997. Dr. Ralph was a genius whose understanding about the body or the reason her method is uniquely effective. Whether seeking relaxation or the deepest manipulation 
an injury or athlete may require, Dr. Rawls methods can be tailored for you. I deliver results. Here's a great recommendation from Greg Luganus, the famous Olympic diver. diver. I have worked for John for over 10 years and have done Dr. Ida Rawls' full 10 series with John several times. This progressive and powerful method of sequentially freeing up the fiscal layers in the body truly creates results every session and generating lasting changes over time. Dr. Ida Rolf once said that her work is something that two people do together. It's hard to understand how you have had a Rolf manual therapy, the actor role the receiver has. I have come to this awareness with John's structure integration body work. John is a facilitator in my health, and I am equally integrated part in the change of my own healing process. As an adult living with HIV, John keeps me deeply in tune with the state of body, mind, and spirit that I require, aspire to, besides HIV positive and now my 50. I intend to always maintain that same active lifestyle I always had. John has and continues to aid me in that goal through his work. John's body work is the best gift you can give yourself. John is terrific, dedicated, and unique in his approach. Thank you, John, as a friend and teacher. Namaste. Greg Luganus, Olympic diver. Throughout the years, we remain in contact with each other. We are on this incredible journey of life. We are all still discovering new things along on this journey of life. Yesterday, I talked to John. I discovered our first challenge sessions we've ever did together. I stumbled upon them when I was looking for something else. John was amazed that I had them. It was our first time, so we were real rusty. Remember, it took me a month just to ride the darn bicycle. My brother just jumped on the bike and rode away. Anyway, I'm proud that we dove in. John and I will be friends for life. I haven't seen him in years but the connection is still there. David Schweitzer. I just got up. It's four or four in the morning. I'm running early because throughout the night, my mind was going over what to say about David Schweitzer. We've been friends for over 40 years. While well, I log into my computer, <coughs> and there's a message from David. <coughs> what a synchronicity. I've known David when I lived in New York City. He lived in Hartford, Connecticut. During the 80s, we both moved to South Miami. At some point, he starts making pyramid kits. Around the same time, my wife starts building pyramid kits. They don't know each other. Both of them at the time were studying with Ramtha. They were the only two individuals building these kits. <coughs> now David and my wife Barbara had a mutual friend in Castle Rock, Arizona. Barbara went to <coughs> visit Jim about three times. Each time Jim Mayhew would say, you just missed David and David Husson, another friend of mine. Now, David Schweitzer John Byer and Harry Bartz introduced me to Mafu's tapes. My dear friend Catherine, who I met at the Runner Institute, got a job working for Shirley McLean. Shirley was going on a nationwide tour and giving lectures. Well, they need a computer program, and I get the job. I take a plane from Miami to Los Angeles. Then I get a ride to the office. I spent the day working, and after work, they said, we are going to a Mafu event. Do you want to come? The rest is history. Isn't it amazing that in my challenging readings, I was told that I would meet Mafu before Mafu was on the scene. Now, David was visiting California for a period of time. He went to several events. I moved to the Pacific Palisades and we would take walks in the hills. Now, there was a pyramid project that David was going to work on. Mafu called David Hermes. 
Hermes was the main architect in Egypt for building the pyramids. Now I'm not saying David was Hermes, yet why did David start building pyramid kits? Does our DNA contain blueprints of who we were in the past? We are all stardust. We are the universe. We're just thinking we're these funky human beings. Well, David invites me to join this project. The project is located in Sedona, Arizona. Wow, what an incredible place. I take a plane from LAX to Phoenix. David and David are there. They said, we're going to see Zoran tonight. And would you like to come? So now David has introduced me to both Mafu and Zoran. Is there synchronicity going on? Anyway, I moved to Sedona, where we all share a house together. Eventually, I moved to this incredible trailer where my backyard is to creep. I have more details in this book, but I met my future wife there. She's going to rent my trailer for a while. Both David and David meet Barbara for the first time. They finally could get the, put the pieces of the puzzle together. Who is this David? Who is this Barbara? Personally, David has a heart of gold. I think his high Q, IQ is off the chart. He is one of those who can do anything. There are several jobs he has worked on where you need the training. Yet without the training, David comes in and performs. David has had an active acupuncture arc, arc, practice in Miami for many years. He has been using lasers quite successfully in his practice. David studied for a while Zambunism. Personally, I think meditation, meditation helps in our daily life. Both my wife and I see David as a great example who brings heaven to earth. Frankly, I think that's the goal in life. If we all did that, then there would be heaven on earth. Meditation is not hocus pocus. Harry Barts. It's 2.13 in the morning. I've been sleeping, meditating for an hour. I was thinking <laughs> and contemplating about the web of life with Harry Barts. I first met Harry in LA in 1976, about 40 years ago. It wasn't until the late 70s did we come in contact with each other again. We both moved to South Florida in the late 70s. We were both involved with the same teacher. At that time, Eric was running a tree cutting business. It was great business, there was always plenty of work. Eric hired me and we became good friends. At that time, windsurfing took off in America. Eric took up windsurfing. He invited me to his house and in his backyard, I learned how to windsurf. I bought a board and it was love at first sight. John Byer and I were windsurfing buddies. During certain seasons, the wind would howl and you would have the time of your life. I didn't see <coughs> Harry for a while. One day I bumped into him and he told me he finished a year course at the Computer Science Institute. He took basic Fortran and COBOL. I always knew I was going to be involved with computers. Even at a young age, I knew that. To make a long story short, I'm still in La Havre and still involved 35 years later. So Harry was a catalyst. Catalyst. Here's the definition. In chemistry, a substance that causes a chemical reaction to occur, but is not itself involved in the reaction. Note, the term catalyst is often used to refer to the prime agent of any change. She was the catalyst for the reorganization. I find it fascinating that life's events help you to be at the right place and right time. Synchronicity was there. Harry gave me the impulse to enroll and start an incredible career. Yet, yeah, it doesn't stop there. Harry was one of the ones who told me about Mafu. Fast forward a few years. Barbara and I moved into a house with Linda Graham. Linda's ex-boyfriend was Don Rockman, who in the future, 25 years later, provided the music for my first poetry music CD. It's featured on this site. Yeah, 
Yet, guess who was living next door? Harry Marks. Harry made a ton of money selling computers and moved to Sedona. This was in 1987. In 1991, my family and I moved to Hawaii for six lawyers years. I got a, a software engineering job at the Maui Space Surveillance site. My wife and daughter went to Maui, and I went to Portland, Oregon for a few weeks. I had a contracting job. I was going to work on it. In Portland, I get a call from Harry, and he tells me that Mafu was going to give a three-day <coughs> retreat in Ashland, Oregon. He was teaching about ancient Vedic meditation techniques. Now that's a subject I love and dear to my heart, so I went. In 1999, I started working with Charles Schwab as a senior software engineer. At that time, family, our family was living in Penn Valley, California. I was a telecommuter. Now Penn Valley internet connection wasn't very good. In fact, it was horrible. You had to use a, a modem. So I started to look for a community that had a great internet connection and a great high school for my daughter. Well, Ashland, Oregon just recently installed the whole town with fiber optics. Ashland High was an incredible school for my daughter. Guess where Harry? Guess what? Harry was still living there. During 2000 to 2008, we spent a lot of time seeing Mafu. He liked me. We first moved there. One day he got off the stage and came up to me and gave me his initiation jacket. This jacket he he worn for many of his initiation. I was honored. At that time, I also was involved in a mystery school and used that jacket for the initiation. For many people, they think that challenge was a fake. Well, I met and talked to Mafu many times. We had a relationship that was deep. Like any relationships, you know one another. Yet, there were numerous times I saw Penny, who channels Mafu, and said hello. She had no idea who I was. In fact, I think I spoke to her once when she was reading off the list of attendants for a seminar and said hi to each one. One day I saw her and Rob Spindler was with her. I said hi and I was walking away. She whispered to Rob, who's that? Rob said, that's Richard Fletcher. That really gave me a sign that I had a relationship with Ma Fu. How can you have a relationship with, with, with someone when you never interacted with them? So it makes perfect sense for Penny to say, who's that? We have never interacted before. What I like about his group that Mafu talked about kindness. He taught about compassion. He talked about meditating for the whole planet. He taught universal truths. The universe is kind. That is its nature. Mafu is kind. That is his nature. As human beings, our true nature is kindness. It is just covered up. So here was a group practicing universal truths of love and compassion. It wasn't just the words. Mafu was an incredible drummer. Imagine during the winter, it's snowing, and you're on top of a mountain inside of an ashram. It's nighttime, and the wind is howling. Mafu is on stage beating these huge Japanese taiko drums. It's a sight to see. At that time and place, you can be in some remote monastery on top of a mountain in the Himalayas at night. Now, back to Harry. As you can see, Harry has had a tremendous impact in my life. Harry is very kind. In Sedona, I had little to my name, and Harry would treat me to lunch. Harry doesn't say much, like myself at times. He doesn't preach, he just smiles. He has nothing to prove. He loves to meditate. I know he is having a great experience, but he doesn't talk about it. Yet you can see it from his eyes. He is humble. He has served the foundation for meditative studies for over 25 plus years. I call him a few times each year. It's good to connect with a dear friend. Friendships are God's way 
to connect to Him. Imagine, we are the universe, yet we have forgotten that fact. Friendship is God's way of saying, I love you. Treasure your friends. We all have an aching soul that's trying to find its way home. Friendships help soothe the soul. Layla Masant. I first met Layla in Buffalo, Buffalo, New York in the late 70s. At that time, her name was Linda Marini. I spent the winter in Buffalo, New York. I remember never seeing the streets without snow from October to around early May. Linda has the same interest that I have. We both love ethnic food cooking and meditation. We were on the same wavelength. We once cooked a 15-course Indian feast for a fundraiser that took us a few days. We got married. I loved her family. Her dad and I got extremely, we got along extremely well. He just recently retired from Carrier after many years of service. He was an engineer. In his youth, I heard he was an incredible baseball player. Linda's mom was extremely kind. She made me a part of the family. I will always cherish that fact. Kindness friends in their family. Next door to Linda lived her grandparents, Nano and Nana. They came from northern Italy. Nano would tell me stories of cooking polenta in the fields in Italy. <coughs> Linda's mom, Margaret, and her Nana would make polenta when we came to visit. They had this huge pot which was only used for cooking polenta, a wooden paddle and a wooden wooden chopping board. They would stir the polenta for about half an hour until it was the right consistency. Then they would pour it on the chopping board. They would use dental floss to cut the polenta. First time I ever saw that. Blue cheese would be served along with the polenta. Another favorite dish of the family was homemade spinach gnocchi. These are spinach dumplings with clarified butter poured over the gnocchi. On top of that, it's freshly grated Parmesan cheese. What I liked about their cooking was that everyone was having the time of their life cooking. They were having fun. They loved that I wanted to learn from them. Usually in most households, the man stays out of the kitchen. They welcomed me into the kitchen. Her mom and dad visited us in Miami a few times. I remember once her dad took me to the golfing range. He was an incredible golfer. Well, I wasn't. I had the opportunity when I was young. Both my grandpa and grandma Fez and grandpa Bert were incredible golf golfers. They had five polar ones between them. They would say, how would you like to learn how to play golf? My brother and I would say, Randy, only old people play golf. Well, I couldn't even hit the ball. It was just driven from the tee. Back then, our finances were low. I remember how it was a treat just to buy haagen ice cream. We love hot rum raisin. I haven't had that in years. One of my most memorable moments of my life was the birth of Leilani. After she was born, I placed her in water. As soon as I did that, she gave me this incredible smile that I will never forget. To this day, I can see her smile. Around this time, I enrolled in the Computer Science Institute. It was time to settle down and get a decent job. Working with computers was love at first sight. It felt good to know that my field was in its infancy and I was about ready to go on an incredible journey. We loved taking Leilani to the beach. She loved the ocean. We would go boogie board. She started around two years old. <coughs> she wore these inflatables around her arms. We would catch a small wave and she would hold around my neck. We loved it. We would catch one wave after another. We got divorced in 1985. 
At that time, I didn't think anything was wrong with my marriage. I put my heart and soul into it. Yet, why did I have eyes to see? Why didn't the thermometer of life kick in and say your marriage is treading on water? I had my first astrology reading a year before, and she said, concentrate on your marriage. You might need to fine tune it. You can never really blame the other person. We have to look inside and take responsibility. It just isn't about the faults of the other person. I really went through the ringer. I didn't think anything was young, was wrong, yet she wanted out. I said, let's go to a marriage counselor. She wouldn't have it. Well, I'm not going to blame her. I went to a psychologist for a few sessions. After the third session, she said, you don't have to come here anymore. I can see you learn fast and really want to do house cleaning on yourself. You will heal yourself. That didn't mean that 100% I was healed. I was still going through it, but the healing process was started. It's amazing the same month and year, my wife Barbara got her divorce from her husband. We have been married for almost 30 years. Time heals. I'm good friends with Layla. She lives in the same town as my daughter. She's taking care of her mom. I have cherished memories of Linda and her family. I take responsibility for the lack of awareness on my part. I just found out yesterday from my daughter Leilani that her Nona passed away today. Leilani's mom was taking care of her. Recently, I've been doing a lot of pondering. I have noticed that generations have carried certain traits. Nona and her family had it. Nona's mom and dad carried that. That trait is kindness. Isn't that truly a gift from God and the universe? The universe is kind. How much grace is there that we carry the traits of the universe inside of our DNA? Kindness is the source of life. Even the Dalai Lama says, kindness is my religion. As you read in the previous chapter, all about the kindness lit Layla's family bestowed upon me. Nona led a good life. She is ready to go home. For the past six months, she would say, I'm ready to go home. We know when it's time to go. We will miss her. She is one with the universe. That's our true nature.